Good morning, everyone. Hello, this is Juan Pablo. And I am very happy to introduce this webinar, one of the central features of uh, the work that we have done in GIFT for a long time, has been to use technologies as a central feature of our peer learning activities. As we know, technologies allow governments, citizens, and people to be closer to each other and to change the way, the way they get informed and the way they exchange, learn, and engage with each other. And among uh, these obvious uh, consideration, uh, we've been very lucky to have a partnership with uh, Open Knowledge International, an organization that works on these um, uh, new technologies for governments and other stakeholders, and that offered to the GIFT network the possibility of disclosing budget information in open data formats. So we started getting to know the first version, the second version of um, this tool, the Open Fiscal Data Package, and we were very lucky to have, uh, in 2016, uh, Mexico raise their hand, the Ministry of Finance saying, we would like to pilot it. So we started working with Mexico and other countries. We will talk about that in a second. But suddenly our friends in Mexico said, we would like to use it to publish, actually publish the information. So that was a, a game changer because the knowledge, the experience of our friends from Open Knowledge had to be tested with a country that was willing to use the, the tool to uh, disclose their whole budget. We're going to briefly talk about that, but um, that's uh, more than two years ago, so uh, the tool has evolved. And uh, today's webinar is basically to uh, talk about this evolution, to present the new features of, of the tool, the new possibilities, and to learn more about the role that we have um, uh, walk together to this point where we have um, a, a very practical, simple, efficient, and tested tool for governments to disclose budget information that is uh, presented with visualization and with features that are very useful for the users. So I'm very glad to present Sander van der Waal from Open Knowledge International. He is in charge, he's leading this project. He was leading at the beginning and uh, uh, he is now back. We're very pleased that he is to lead uh, this Open Knowledge International effort. And uh, with us also Lorena Rivero, who is going to, uh, from the Mexican Ministry of Finance perspective, share their experience. So thank you to both Sander and uh, Lorena. And uh, let me ask Sander to uh, please proceed with his presentation. Thank you very much, Juan Pablo. The agenda for today, the introduction um, by Juan Pablo uh, just finished. Thank you very much, Juan Pablo, for your kind words. Um, my presentation will focus on two uh, main topics. So the first is the Open Fiscal Data Package specification, the version 1.0 that I will tell you more about. And the second part um, will focus more on how to publish using this specification, using the tool set that we've worked on called Open Spending. Um, and then I will hand over to uh, Lorena to give a demonstration of the use of uh, these tools in the in the Mexican Fiscal Transparency Portal, as Juan Pablo already uh, alluded to, we've had a lot of really great feedback uh, from our partnership with uh, with the Mexican government. So really, really pleased that Lorena is here uh, to share their experiences and give you a little bit more of a, a feel of what it means to publish uh, data using the open spending and the fiscal data package standard. Um, and then at the end, uh, we hope to hear from all of you any questions or comments or suggestions that you will have in the discussion that will be um, moderated by Juan Pablo. So first, let me focus on the Open Fiscal Data Package specification. First, I'd like to do that by giving a little bit of history because there's a, a lot of work that has gone on into this um, for almost 10 years now when 
uh, we at what we could then called Open Knowledge Foundation started uh, building open spending version one and a tool which called uh, Where Does My Money Go? Uh, that actually, I, I looked it up before uh, this webinar and we received a prize in 2009 for Where Does My Money Go? And it was a simple visualization to help citizens understand how their tax money was spent. And we uh, trialed that with some early visualization of the budget data and spending data from the UK government in particular, um, that was helpful for us to uh, to share with citizens and, and engage with them uh, to, for them to get a better understanding in how their government spent their money. Now, out of that, uh, the first version uh, of what's now the fiscal data package specification was developed. We call it the budget data package back then in collaboration, collaboration and support with uh, many partners, as you can you can see here. Um, and then uh, between uh, 2015 and 2016, there were several iterations on the specification uh, with kind support from, uh, from GIFT. And in April 2016, we released a version uh, 0.3. Uh, and in, uh, by September of that year, the first adoption uh, was there, as uh, Juan Pablo already mentioned, by the uh, Treasury of Mexico, which was great because it helped us get a lot of feedback from uh, real practical use cases of what, what does it mean for a, a national government to adopt this, this specification, and that was really great feedback. Um, so the process for the current version uh, 1.0 started in October uh, 2017. Uh, it was reviewed by the advisory board in, in March of 2018, and in May it was announced and published. So this is a, a bit of the history of, of where we, how we came uh, to where we are today. Um, but what are, what are we talking about when we talk about the open fiscal data package? Um, it is an open standard for publishing fiscal data. No surprises there. Um, but the core of it is really that it is open by nature and supported by open tools. Uh, we wanted to make it simple to use and build it on standard file formats, data types, and metadata. One of the key pieces of the fiscal data package specification is that it is able to work with whatever data is currently being published. And this is the major piece of learning that we've developed over the years that um, rather than prescribing what the data should look like, we recognize that a lot of data in practice is being published according to national, sometimes local or regional regulations and laws. And we wanted to make sure that the specification adapts to what is being published. That also meant that we didn't want to have a specific opinion on what fiscal system or process would be used, whatever classification scheme is being used by the data being published. We wanted the, the specification to be a, uh, adopting or flexibly incorporating that. And I will go back into that in, in more detail because it's a key feature of the specification. Um, that also meant that it's, it's a flex, flexible specification and it's extensible as to fit as many government, different government use cases and scenarios as possible. So to summarize those, the key features of the current spec is that it, we minimize the assumptions about data while flexibly supporting extensions. Um, initially, so with the with version uh, 0.3 and before we trialed complex fiscal modeling with very specific specifications like COFOC, uh, we recognized that not all data was available in these specifications and we wanted to be more flexible and, and, and work with the data that is out there and that governments are able to publish today and that's the uh, that's a key feature of the version one um, and the other key feature is that it is based on the tabular data package which is part of the program called frictionless data frictionless data is a, a broader program um, that we at open knowledge international work on which focuses on a lightweight specification for data in general and building tools and integrations with existing tools so that the whole data flow and the whole data pipeline can be used and managed using that simple specification. And because the fiscal data package specification is built on top of the frictionless data specification, 
all the tools that are being developed as part of frictionless data can be used for fiscal data packages. And that makes it very easy uh, for adopters of the specification to on the tools that have been made available as part of frictionless data. And I want to briefly mention the tabular data package because it is, it, it's the core of what uh, the fiscal data package is built on. The tabular data package recognizes that any tabular data, so you can think about simple spreadsheets that you use every day, have very similar features in terms of data types, data representation, things that could be validated around the data. And the, the core feature of having metadata for files and the entire package, as well as packaging metadata with the data files. These key features are part of the tabular data specification and um, the fiscal data package specification is built on top of that. So, the, the, and we'll see that later when we go into uh, the use case of uploading data on open spending, where you can see how uh, these types of uh, features from the tabular data specification are included in, in open spending. We won't go into the details of these, um, but we will focus more specifically on what we've done uh, with the fiscal specification, which is um, extending the tabular data package, but make those extensions optional. Again, being flexible in terms of what data is currently being published um, and try and build incre incrementally on the features that are being made available by governments. Um, and it, it will make it possible for governments to follow a more paced route so they can publish the fiscal files in the open format. So they, if they already have a CSV file, a common separated file uh, that can be uh, uploaded in open spending um, and semantics and modeling of that data can be incrementally added uh, towards making available a data package and making use of, of some of the other features that are available in version one. Um, so what are those features? For example, uh, we now have new facilities for describing the structure of the source data. So we have uh, the idea of constant fields that, that allow you to model implicit knowledge or metadata uh, that is available in your, your fiscal data file. Um, we have a feature for unpivoting or denormalizing the source data. Um, and by using foreign keys, we were able to link different files together, uh, which allows for the use of code lists, for example, that some governments include in their budget files. And those are now part of the specifications. All of this is to make it easier for uh, the tools that we use to interpret the data uh, and, and have it available in a machine readable format. And this allows also the linking of budget and spending data with other types of data sets, which is what we're hoping to work towards in the next phase. So once we know the, stand, the structure of the data, it makes it easier to combine these uh, different data sets and query it. And we can, as part of the, the tool set that we develop, we can refer to a single data point in the data. Um, so this is a bit technical, but it makes it possible to very specifically refer to a question like, or an answer to the question of what is the allocated budget for a specific contract in, in 2016. And because of this, this feature, it makes it possible to link between budget files and other types of data files. So denormalization, just to sort of explain very briefly what it, what it means for those unfamiliar with it, you could have two different files um, that refer to different, different parts of the budget. So for example, you have three um, departments in this example with an executed budget for 2017 and an approved budget for 2018, planned budget for 2019. Um, and then you have the data in a, in a similar but different type uh, of format where the columns are actually referring to the, the different departments rather than having them as a separate row. Um, you can combine these by sort of denormalizing them into one data set. So that's part of what the fiscal data package can help you do. And once you've got it in that denormalized format, you can uh, uh, extract these different uh, other ways of, of um, making the data available um, in different visualizations or even different uh, tables from that denormalized version. 
Um, and this is a, a great feature which helps us um, to have a base sort of denormalized data uh, file for the fiscal data on top of which these other representations can be created. The other thing that I want to men mention here is the, the concept of column types. And this is a lightweight taxonomy for describing the columns of a fiscal data file. Again, these uh, column types are optional and, and can incrementally be added to the data depending on what is available in the data set that you upload to open spending. Um, and these could refer, for example, to specific types of classifications or to, for example, suppliers or uh, other types of concept that you want to model in your, your fiscal data. And by using this simple taxonomy of co column types, it makes it easier uh, for users to ascribe and uh, link these different classifications and different other column types in their data. Again, making it easier for the tools to understand the concept that you work with. And the more you are able to assign these column types, the richer the visualizations can become that you can generate on top of that. So just as an example, you can think about a date as a fiscal year, which would be an integer. Um, you can think about a, um, a code for an administrative classification, which would be the type of a string. Uh, and values could be the type of an integer. And these are also referring back to the tabular data package that I referred to earlier. Um, and once you've specified this, you can do data validation on the fiscal data. And, you can, and this can help you find uh, some errors or oversights in your data um, if the column types are not uh, respected within the data. And uh, that helps improve the quality of the data data sets that you would upload and it helps you uh, as a user uploading the data to to find specific issues that might be there in your data. Um, finally, the, on the column types, there's also this concept of hierarchy. So you can think about projects which would fall under programs uh, and then have sub projects and contracts and invoices assigned to them. Um, this makes it possible um, to, to use these relationships, even if only parts of these column types are used. And what that means is that you can have um, references to this hierarchy uh, using this foreign keys example that I mentioned earlier. So you can have different uh, specific files as part of your fiscal, fiscal package where one refers to the hierarchy of the programs or projects and one that refers to the uh, sort of ultimate invoices uh, and how they uh, relate to the different projects can be modeled separately. Then skipping over this one, um, in its most simple form, and this is this is useful to, to mention is, it could be just a tag. So this is, again, making it easy for you to start out using the column types just as a way of referencing specific types in your data. Um, but if you're more advanced, you can extend it further and you can use build the taxonomy that I mentioned earlier with the um, relationships between and programs, for example, um, using a mix and, and match types approach. Okay, that concludes the overview of the fiscal data package version 1.0. But now let's sort of move to how do you practically publish it using the uh, fiscal data package tools that are open spending. There are basically three ways of doing it. So if you've got budget and spending data, either because you work for government or you've had it from your government and you want to make it available, um, there are mainly two ways of doing it. One is to do it on open spending. Openspending.org is the centralized platform where uh, budget and spending data is being published using the specification I just outlined. Uh, and providing easy to use visualizations uh, for users that will make it easier for citizens to understand the budget and spending data. There are two ways in which that data can get into open spending. One is to use the open spending packager, and one is an automated process through the pipeline scripts. And I will go into more detail um, on each of these two. Uh, we've also learned that for some governments, it's not feasible to publish the data on the centralized 
platform outside of the go government infrastructure. And that's why we've developed what we call open spending in a box, which means that you can deploy and run your own instance of the same tool set on your own infrastructure. So the software is available as open source, which means anyone can download the software and use it for free, but we can help you deploy it and run it um, as, as your own instance um, on your own infrastructure. I'm taking you through a few screenshots that, uh, that show you how to uh, make the, the data available using the open spending packager. Um, there are four sort of easy steps to making the data available. The one is you provide your data. This can be to upload a file that you have on your own computer or to link to a URL of a website somewhere where the budget file itself is available. This would be a very stripped down comma separated uh, file of the information that you want to publish. Um, this will be checked to see if it's a valid CSV file and then you can continue to the next step. And this is where, where the magic happens. And um, I want to show this because it shows the different feature that I talked about in the, in the previous section on the specification. What you're looking at on, uh, on this slide is you've got the different columns in the, in the CSV file and you've got the first three lines of the file that was just uploaded in the previous step. What you can do in this screen is to say which of the columns matches onto what part of the specification. And you can see the drop down on the left hand side of this screen, which is showing you the different types that are available out of the box. So this is what we have available in open spending for anyone to use. Uh, you can see that there's a date. You can see there's the three types of classifications, administrative, economic and functional classification. Um, and we support some standardized um, classification like COFOC. So if you do have a file that uses COFOC, you can uh, um, have it make that um, apparent here in this by mapping that column onto those columns that specify the, the classifications. Um, or you can use any other classification that might exist in, in your government or in your organization. Other things that you can see here are fiscal attributes, such as budget direction, expenditure type, uh, which phase of the budget life cycle the data refers to, um, geographic information, such as the, the country or the region, um, which is represented in the data, um, and other things, of course, the amount, the amount currency and the amount kind. And it um, because it's built on the tabular data package standard, it supports the different types of values or ways in which different countries represent values in different ways. Um, so this is where you make that mapping and you can choose to just do a very minimal mapping of just a value, for example, or just the years, or you can do a very extensive mapping, including all of the different parts of the data, depending on how, how rich the data is that you upload. Then in the next step, um, you can provide metadata for your fiscal data package. In this example, I happen to be for the, from the Netherlands, so I'm, I'm using the, uh, the Dutch uh, budget data from the national portal in the Netherlands. And I'm describing here that the continent is Europe. This is the country, the Netherlands. Uh, it's national level, so there's no city. And the period is 2013 up until 2018, in my example. Um, I can provide a human readable name and a short description. And in the, in the description, I refer to the site that provided this data originally. Um, and that's really it. The next step is for you to save the data package onto the portal. Um, and then it's available for anyone to use. And then users can create different types of uh, visualizations on this data. And I won't go into that in more detail because Lorena will take us through the example of Mexico, which will illustrate that very nicely uh, in a moment. Um, but that's the OS Packager as one way in which anyone can uh, go to OpenSpending.org today and upload data on OpenSpending. A second uh, way of doing that is through the open spending pipeline. This is for 
governments or organizations that want to automate the upload of budget and spending data um, or may have a more complex um, way of wanting to describe or make the data available. Um, what we do is we as Open Knowledge International work with you as a government who want to upload the data on open spending um, to build that script together and different uh, types of use cases are available. So for example, we can work with your, uh, your technical team to do that, or uh, we can help do it for you. Uh, and what then happens is you can period periodically rerun the scripts. For example, if new data becomes available every month, you can rerun the script every month, every month and new data is made available on the portal. Um, and similarly to the data that gets uploaded through the open spending packager, all data that's been made available is available via, via the central open spending API and all visualizations that you can create um, on open spending are available. So these are two different ways in which you can get the data into open spending, but what, once it is in open spending, um, it, it can be uh, used by anyone for the same purposes. So there's no difference between these two approaches for the end user. The third uh, option that I mentioned, open spending uh, in a box, is uh, to provide support that we're providing today with generous support from GIFT. Um, that we can work with you to provide on-premises installation of the tool set that I just demonstrated. So all features are available and customizable in a very similar way, um, but it will provide you as a user uh, with the opportunity to retain full control over the infrastructure and availability of the data. The same APIs and, uh, and, and tool set is available as on central open spending. So what I mentioned at the beginning around frictionless data tools that are um, available to make use of open spending that's available for those uh, who access the data on an on-premises open spending. Um, we're looking into synchronizing with the central open spending if desired. So one opportunity that you might have is that if you do use on-premises installation of open spending, but you want to make sure that the central database that we're building uh, from the different portals um, are, are, uh, includes the data from your, your government, we can um, synchronize that data with the central open spending. Okay, so that concludes my uh, part of the presentation. What I'd like to do is hand over to Lorena now, and I'll stop sharing my screen, and uh, Lorena will take us through example of how Mexico is using open spending in the, in the fiscal data package tool set. Here is Lorena. I, I hope everyone can see my, my slides now. Okay, so I'm going to guide you all through um, how we have implemented the open fiscal data package. As uh, Juan Pablo mentioned in the beginning, we, we started piloting very early in the process of this um, specification of how the budget data should be um, published to, to make a better impact on better use of the information. So I'm going to guide you through what we have done. And yes, we were the first country to formally adopt the Open Fiscal Data Package as a government. And we included it a, as part of, a, as an essential part of our a, fiscal transparency portal, which is Transparencia Presupuestaria. And mainly it has become a very important part of the site. Um, why is it important? For us, the Open Fiscal Data Package has offered this standardized framework to present all the budget and, expend and spending data. We found a uh, standard just and it's quite important for countries that not, do not have the same uh, accounting moments. For example, in um, Francophone countries, they have different uh, accounting moments and moments of execution, it's quite flexible to present a different stages of the execution of the budget. So for us, we show the approved, adjusted execution and the year-end report. And we present this all as part of the same data set, which has been uh, great for our users. 
uh, it has given us flexibility for different classifications. Our main classifications, which are the most common ones, the administrative or um, organizational classification, the functional and economic. Though um, we have seen in other countries uh, that one of the classifications is part of the National Development Plan classification. And since it's quite flexible, it's something that can be uh, done. And we have some other classifications embedded, though these are the, the principal ones. Uh, we have regular updates. We update quarterly reports, which give certainty to the user, uh, mainly uh, civil society organizations, um, heavy uh, users for, for this information, um, value a lot the certainty of having the information updated regularly. And we have different forms of using the data. Uh, we use both the visualizations and the API um, that is given by the Open Fiscal Data Package. What we found, and, and we see that it's the most relevant part of this, of this uh, specification and this standard, is that it's the basic information that we need to connect all other information. This data set has been um, our core to connect with information, with performance information, with open contracting partnership information, the EITI, and uh, infrastructure projects. This all becomes part of different platforms in our site. Uh, for example, we have the budget programs, and here we have the core information of open spending. The performance evaluation system is also connected by these data sets. It has also allowed us to connect public investment, the national development plan, the open contracting and extractive industry. So as you can see, and, uh, and as Sander was showing you, yeah, uh, um, the visualizations, we do have a visualization from the open spending, but it gives us a lot of potential to connect with other data sets and other information with different presentations. So now I'm going to go through how it looks like in different forms. So this pretty much looks as what Sander was showing us, and we have it embedded, the open spending platform visualizations inside of our fiscal transparency site. We have data from 2008 to 2018, and we um, keep updating each quarter play report. So we have the different moments of the budget and different classifications that can be filtered or downloaded by, by any user which is um, great for us, for, for them to use. But here, as you can see in this, in this platform, you can uh, see how it is also connected with the performance information and all the program information. We do this by connecting it uh, through the API given by the Open Fiscal Data Package. The API we, we have found it's quite powerful. It's very flexible and it has allowed us not uh, only to use the visualizations given by Open Knowledge, we appreciate a lot, but we have been able to give more uh, different types of visualizations to our users. For example, in the tree map that you can see here, you can see both the allocated and the execution of the budget inside of the same tree map. And you can go more in depth, for example, to go to get all the way to the line item. So you can start going more in depth to the analysis that any user would want to see. And this is for the economic classification. We're all pulling this from the API. We are also showing in this like a program profile. In these program profiles, we're also showing this administrative classification, as you can see there, you see it here. So you can see which university has a X amount of allocated money and the paid amount um, given. So you can see who has money and how much has been allocated to it. This is all being pulled and the user doesn't have to go uh, through through all the data. Um, and this is how we have been able to link also with the performance goals and indicators. Since the programs are our basic unit for performance information, through the Open Fiscal uh, Data Package, we have also linked to this uh, performance goals and indicators, which has its own data set. Though it uses the same pivot entries as the Open Fiscal Data Package, which, which allows us to give up a lot more context on the information that is being um, presented. Here and for the countries who are part of the COST initiative or have published investment projects, this is also very useful. Uh, we present our map with the public investments, 
But as you can see in the blue um, square that we have on the on the right, we are presenting the budget. And this is part of the Open Fisco Data Package. We have included the ID for each investment project, which allows us to bring all the budget that has been allocated, modified, and executed per project to each of the projects a profile. So as you can see, we use the Open Fiscal Data Package API a lot to connect different information all throughout our site. As you can see here, this is the contract execution. And for those countries that are implementing open contracting data standard, as you can see in the green uh, rectangle here, in the end, you can see the execution of the budget. So we bring the information for the approval and contracting process from the contracting uh, system, but the execution of the, the budget is again coming from the open fiscal data package. For us, uh, hearing that the 1.0 version will have a, a URI directly to one point in the budget will also be helpful for, for this display of information that can take you to that point in the budget. And finally, also with the Open Disability Package, we have been able to link the ITI information. If you, uh, we have mapped revenue and expenditures coming from uh, extractive industries. So if you click on any of those programs, it takes you back to the budget profile of each of the programs. So we're also connecting it through these pivot entries that we have included in the data set. And something to point out is that presenting this information is a very simple structure for us to create. It's the way we use the budget. It has been fairly easy to connect. We use the pipeline uh, since we have regular updates. It allows us to have the updates of each quarter without uh, changing the whole, data, uh, the whole data set that comes from 2008 to 2018. It just changes the last a part of 2018 and substitutes with the new information that we are processing. So it's the way we use it through the pipeline. And so this is our use of the open fiscal data package. And I hope it's useful and inspires other countries to be part of it. Wonderful. Thank you, Lorena. The way we proceed in this webinar with um, the main features and evolution of um, the tool and then the way it has been used by Mexico, I believe illustrate very much how important is it has been to have on the user's side of the equation, a Ministry of Finance such as Mexico that has been so innovative, creative, willing to always uh, push the agenda further, linking data sets so on and so forth. So this has been a wonderful partnership thanks to uh, the specific needs and uh, um, uh, the um, uh, amb ambition of uh, uh, our colleagues in Mexico. Uh, let me thank uh, uh, from the Mexico side, not only Lorena, of course, but uh, Angel Mejia, Aura Martinez and a wonderful team that uh, has been working on this very, very hard. Um, also, let me mention uh, uh, just for the record that uh, uh, the Open Knowledge International team has been fantastic. And here, let me begin from Rufus Pollock, Paul Wash, Oscar Montiel, Adam Karif, of course, Sander and others that have been um, responding and reacting and always ahead of um, the specific needs that countries have shown. Mexico in these experiences is our champion, but there are other countries that have piloted the tool, such as uh, South Africa, Guatemala, Croatia, Uruguay, Paraguay, and others. Let me also underline that on the gift team side, this has been possible uh, thanks to the wonderful work of Tania Sanchez, Tariq Gracida, Albertina, uh, Meana, all uh, my colleagues uh, that in different uh, functions have um, not only made the uh, open spending tool to work, but also 
uh, this webinar and many other things to uh, take place. I have a question uh, that has been uh, two questions, uh, and I would be thankful if uh, both Sander and Lorena could comment on, on them briefly. One is related to the quality of the data. As, as we know, some countries uh, has, have um, been uh, putting together and using uh, their uh, budget information using some standards. Other countries have others. Uh, and uh, sometimes countries have, uh, ministers of finance have uh, uh, the question about how, uh, well, actually, uh, useful is the data in the status in which they have it for uh, engaging in a, an open data disclosure process as, as the one we have described. For this, for instance, we've had and we continue to have the collaboration of the Boost team at the World Bank that have been helping some countries in arranging, rearranging and put some specific uh, systematization of uh, the budget accounts of some countries. And this was, for instance, the case of Guatemala. But um, uh, how would you respond, colleagues, to this uh, concern that uh, the data in which some ministers of finance uh, uh, have uh, their um, budget information uh, is, um, to say it uh, in, in, in a very practical way, no, not as advanced and standardized uh, than what Mexico or other countries have. That's one, one concern, the quality. Uh, related to this, the, the need of updating the data. Of course, this information, once it is open, it is very useful, but it needs to be constantly updated. And what's the specific effort that ministers of finance need to make to make sure that uh, the data is updated. Uh, and finally, the third question is related to the possibility of hosting in the open spending in a box, as you mentioned, uh, the, the tool. If you could elaborate a little bit on this. Uh, this is a magnificent new feature of um, the tool, because in the past we've seen that for some countries, not having absolute control of the data was um, a, a, a deal breaker uh, for using the tool. Now, this will allow them to absolutely uh, get uh, enthusiastic and engage with uh, the possibility of not only piloting as they have, but uh, publish information with absolute control of um, the um, data. Thank you very much, Juan Pablo, for those questions. Um, so your first question related to the quality of data. Um, we have worked with Boost uh, in the past to make the data available as from, from those governments who um, are part of the Boost program and work with the Boost team at the World Bank. Um, as you mentioned, Guatemala is an example uh, of that Uruguay data has been uploaded to open spending that was part of the of the boost program as well um, but one major feature of the the latest version of this tool set is that um, it doesn't matter what classification scheme you use so you can have very high level data that is quite raw and doesn't have a very detailed and specific classification scheme that data can be made available through our tools. You don't need to adopt a very specific classification scheme. You don't need to have it. So you can start by just making available the data that is there right now. Um, and let me then jump to your third question, because if there are concerns about making that data available um, on the centralized open open spending right now because there are issues and concerns around quality. The open spending in a box makes it possible for governments with whom we work to just test it and pilot it on their own infrastructure. And that means that they can control their own 
uh, availability of data and they can just make it available, for example, to specific parties initially if there are concerns around the data. Uh, so we invite anyone to uh, reach out to us and work with us uh, on making this data uh, available and we can help you through that whole process and as you gradually start classifying the data more we can uh, add more of the features that the fiscal data package standard supports uh, onto that data. Um, regarding your second question around the need to update the data um, this is something which is supported through the, the process that I mentioned um, as, as the second way in which you can upload data. We can automate that process together with you. So with the Mexican example, uh, we work with the Mexican team who um, use the open spending pipeline to each month update the data on open spending and they have control over what data is available there on open spending because uh, we work with them on and give them access to the open spending pipeline and if governments have the technical expertise within their own government and ministry to uh, uh, to to make use of that open spending pipeline themselves uh, we can help and give access to your team uh, to make that data available um, uh, or we can work with you and help you uh, set that up for you so if data does need to be updated the the effort would be to uh, set up the script uh, in the pipeline and uh, it can be done uh, that each month the data or it could even be each year or however or each quarter however often new data is available that that gets updated and uh, and controlled by the governments themselves. Uh, of course, uh, if you are um, using open spending in a box, you have full control over that and you can, of course, use it anytime uh, you want. But we are there uh, from Open Knowledge International through generous support from GIFT to make, uh, you know, to, to help you in that process. And we can support you with that uh, local installation of open spending in a box. Uh, because it is available as open source, anyone can can start it so if your team is uh is technical and would like to start using it out on uh, on their own infrastructure that is possible today um but if you reach out to us we can help you uh help you do that as well um let me just quickly share in the chat our email address where uh, you can contact us it's open spending dash support as okfn.org where you can reach out uh, to us to uh, if you need any help or want to follow up after this webinar. Thank you so much, Sander. This is very useful. Let me ask now Lorena uh, to address some of these uh, uh, concerns and uh, uh, also uh, to give her final remarks. And then we'll come back to you, Sander, for final remarks. And that should take us to the end of the webinar. Um, I will mainly focus on the part of the completeness of the data because the quality of the data it's very important so that users can be can can know what they're using. Um, so it is not that you have to go to the lowest level of detail or other classifications. I mean, it's going to depend on the data available to the country, and that flexibility is good. But the important thing is that you make it uh, clear to the user what information they are, uh, they are going to be uh, seeing and what information is available. For example, we have seen countries that only have uh, the information for the central government and it's not the complete budget. Is it correct or incorrect to present that information? Well, it would be correct as long as the user know that it's only information for the central government. As long as it's declared on the data set, and that will make it useful for, for anyone, even if it's a, a, there are different models for, for releasing data in different countries, in different ministries of finance. Uh, for example, by department, uh, each department displaying their data. I mean, the best way would be to centralize this information, but if there is no way of doing this, there are other options but it is important to declare what you are displaying. And the issue with the updates of the data, um, 
it is important uh, to define a period of, of time for updating and keep a calendar on this. Uh, creating certainty for, for the users is one of the most important things. Otherwise, they don't know when, they, when the information is going to re be released and then you do not support a greater use of the data. So being formal in the way that you um, update the, the data, and uh, I mean, it can be daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, even yearly, which I would say would not be the best uh, update, but it's still possible depending on the information available, as long as it's updated in a, a regular manner. And it's clear to the users when the information, the new information will be available. Uh, I think uh, Sander went through all the different options on how to update uh, the, the data in the different formats the Open Fiscal Data Package gives. Uh, we started updating with the Open Fiscal Data Package per se. Then we moved to the pipeline since we have these regular updates and having control of the data was one of our main concerns in the beginning, though we have uh, a more stabilized um, service from the Open Fiscal Data Package, which has given us the flexibility to keep going the way we are uh, doing it and pulling from the API instead of installing uh, the Open Fiscal Data Package. Uh, so far, I mean, we are certainly going to look into this, the Open Fiscal in a box. Uh, though it has not been that much of our concern lately since the service has been up and running uh, regularly. So that would be it. And yeah, that's me. Thank you so much, Lorena. Let me ask Sander for your final remarks. Thank you, Juan Pablo. I, I hope this has been uh, useful for uh, those in the webinar or those watching this at a later stage. Um, I just wanted to say that we look forward to uh, receiving your your comments or if you're interested in publishing the data on open spending, please reach out uh, to myself or my team uh, via openspending-support at okfn.org, which I also provided in the chat. I'm not sure if you can see that if you're watching this at a later stage. Um, but yes, I I, um, I look forward to to working with our partners to uh, make more of uh, information available on open spending and to see it being used more. Um, we will uh, at the end of this month be at the International Open Data Conference in Buenos Aires. For those uh, who uh, are following this webinar are going to be there as well. That might be an opportunity to follow up uh, in person. So. That was uh, that were the final thoughts from my end, Juan Pablo. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Sander. And uh, again, this has been recorded so uh, other people can have access to this wonderful discussion and all the information that has been shared about the great possibilities of publishing in open data formats budget information. Uh, thank you, Sander. Thank you very much, Lorena. And thank you to you, our participants that have been uh, listening and following this discussion. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Hasta luego. Gracias.